Sports. We are Buffalo. We are NC. The Royals are home for three, beginning with Memorial Day and trying to forget about yesterday in Anaheim. Giordano Ventura will never forget his first start against the Astros when he picked up his first major league win and helped lead the Royals to a sweep. That's who's waiting for Ventura at Kauffman Stadium today. Game one is next on Fox Sports Kansas City. Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Happy Memorial Day, the unofficial beginning of summer and the official sport of summer. The Royals are home for three days to play the Houston Astros. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark. I'm Ryan Lefevre. One of the many keys to a successful season is you need to beat the teams you should beat. And with that in mind, the Houston Astros come to town with the fewest wins in the American League. So it's a team the Royals should beat. And they have. Back in April, the Royals swept the three-game series from the Astros in Houston. And if you go back to last year, the Royals have won the last six against Houston. They've won 16 of the last 22 against the Houston Astros. And let's welcome in Rex Hudler. So we know all of that. This is a big series for the Royals coming off what happened in Anaheim, a disappointing loss yesterday. And Jordano Ventura takes the mound in game one tonight. It's always special when you have a young phenom to start off a homestand, only a short three, three dayer, but they've got to find the way to climb back to 500 and stay above the water. With pitching and defense, that's going to do it in this game of baseball. Ventura, he has huge success in his first Major League win against these guys at Houston. So the next day, we're hanging around the batting cage, and I saw a guy named Nolan Ryan. I said, Nolan, what do you think about that kid? He goes, Rex, he's the real deal. That's the guy that they're hoping Ned Yost hopes stands up and continues his dominance with those three wonderful pitches. Joel Goldberg will be joining us when we come back, and he'll be talking about Omar Infante back in the lineup, coming back from the disabled list tonight.
player, and why not? He comes off the disabled list after missing 17 games, still fourth on the Royals in RBIs. And in games that he has played, he's hit 267. Royals second baseman in the rest of those games, just a 190. So a big boost to get Omar Infante back off the disabled list. Joel Goldberg here beyond the fountains out at Kauffman Stadium. Omar returns reliever Casey Coleman goes back down, optioned to the minors. And for Omar, it's the production and the intangibles that should help the Royals. In terms of leadership, you know, he's a big part of what we do here, especially for our Latin players, you know. He's been in the game a long time, and he understands how to play the game the right way, how to practice the right way. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's a, he's a good example to all of our young Latin players. Well, he has been so big for the Royals. So has your Donald Ventura set to make a start in front of a big holiday crowd. First pitch is coming up next. Chevy dealer at Chevy Truck Month. Visit your Kansas City Chevy dealers. Buy the Missouri Lottery. Try the Missouri Lottery's new Lucky Sevens playbook. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Big holiday crowd here today, and once again, the Royals going above and beyond on Memorial Day. Several pregame ceremonies. Honoring members of the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and specifically two families honored on the field, families who had lost somebody recently. And both Alex Gordon and Greg Holland, part of the ceremony, going out onto the field and giving them a bouquet of flowers on behalf of the Royals and really on behalf of everybody here today. And now as we get to baseball, the somber mood turns to a celebratory mood. Here's what we were talking about earlier and it was hard to watch and yet very important to watch as we remember what today is all about. So kudos to the Royals for truly making Memorial Day memorable. It was an unbelievable pregame show. I don't think I've ever witnessed anything like it. Congratulations to the Royals and all of those families that are involved that lost their loved ones and thank you for our freedom. So the Houston Astros are here for a three game series.
The Astros are just 19 and 32. That's the worst record in the American League. And HUD, they have the lowest team batting average in the league, but they've hit the third most home runs. They've got some dangerous bats in that lineup. They've got some pop, but I'll tell you, that character at that number one hole, Altuve, he's some kind of ball player. He's had hits in 16 of his last 17 games. When the Royals saw him last April, he was hitting cleanup. But this guy's a real get on base type of guy. Speaking of getting on base, Fowler, man, he's been getting a lot of walks lately. He's had 19 this month, so. This is a lineup here that you just can't take easily, but hopefully Ventura will make it look easy as he has the capability of doing that. Bo Porter is in his second year as manager of the Houston Astros, and they'll be facing Jordano Ventura. And Ventura got his first major league win earlier this year against the Astros. That was back on April the 15th. And the Astros really didn't have much of an answer for Ventura that night. He went seven innings. Gave up just one earned run and struck out seven. So with the military caps on, the Royals take the field for this very brief homestand. Two and four overall. He has not won yet at Kauffman Stadium. Now, I think tonight's the night, especially with the, the amped up crowd like it is. But, you know, he's only a... a received four total runs of support in his last three starts. He hasn't won any of those and that's not very many runs to work with. Hopefully the offense will get a hold of Feldman, give him some support and he can go ahead and execute his three fabulous pitches. Above average fastball, above average curve and his changeups coming. Believe me, I think it won't be much longer and that'll be an above average pitch as well. He can keep the ball down and command it and follow Salvi's lead. Our four Midwestern dealers around the horn defense. Siriaco, he turned a nice double play for the Royals yesterday against those Angels, but he finds himself over at third base. Remember, this guy, he's multi talented. He's played and started in seven positions in the big leagues in his career, all but pitcher and catcher. So he's got some athleticism. Hopefully, he'll make all the plays right at him. And you never know, he's got the ability to make something nice. And welcome back, Omar Infante, both on defense. And to the lineup. Infante played in three games at Triple-A Omaha and was four for 11. All right, our umpiring crew, Gary Cedarstrom, is behind the plate. He's the crew chief, along with Kerwin Danley at first base, Lance Barksdale at second, and Mark Ripperger is at third. He's in his 21st year, Cedarstrom, as a big league umpire. That was a planned cannon blast. <laughs> just in case your television just vibrated <laughs> off the entertainment center. I about jumped out of the booth. That was pretty loud. The general might have brought some of that arsenal with him. That's a good name for it. Because it was a gorilla blast. Ball one to Jose Altuve. It helps to know if a cannon blast is coming. Here's George Springer in the on deck circle. <laughs> and even the young lady behind him in the first row. And I think she was watching the cannon blast, and it's still a shock. Oh. That is base hit number 71 for Jose Altuve. That leads the American League. And he's now hit safely in 17 of his last 18 games. Yep. He's been on fire. He's short to the ball. Good short quick swing. No pun intended meant to his height, by the way. George Springer and the Royals saw his major league debut when they were in Houston in the middle of April. Got his first big league hit against Jeremy Guthrie, a swinging bunt. Took a big swing and hit a little dribbler up the third base line. So we didn't get a chance to see his power, but we saw his speed. And he has been showing some power lately. He has four home runs in his last three games. And over a longer stretch, seven home runs in his last 15 games. 
starting to find his groove. Reading some comments that he's said, I'm able to slow things down. It's a little bit easier in those first two weeks. Things are slowing down, and that's what the player wants to do, especially Young. He's got an awfully long swing. And that's a big swing, trying to catch up to 97 miles an hour. That front foot roll over like that. Oof, a lot of leverage there. I don't know if he saw much, but it was a big swing. Altuve, he'll run. He's got 17 bags. He's been caught three times. And we talked about the Astros power third in the league in home runs are also third in the league in stolen bases. So they do have some balance it would appear offensively but again the lowest team batting average in the league. And now Springer walks and the Astros have two on with nobody out. Ventura had walked only one over his previous last two starts that's 12 and a third innings and Sal Perez is out for an early meeting. I'm sure Ventura has a lot of emotions running through him. Hasn't gotten a win here at the K. Packed house. First inning. A lot of those jitters, whether you're young or old, I've said many times, it's that first inning until you can get on track is when the opponents, or the Royals for that matter, want to take advantage of a pitcher. It's because he's seeing what pitches work for him. I don't think Fowler's going to be bunting here. Too hard to bunt a pitch thrown at that velocity. Might almost managers sometimes just think they got a better chance of swinging on it and making contact. Fly ball pitcher. And now two and zero. Oh. And another reason not to bunt. You figure Ventura with his talent at some point tonight. You hope it's with the next pitch. Is going to pull it together. So if the Astros are thinking they're going to get to him, this might be their only shot. Exactly. Interesting, both Omar Infante and Alcides Escobar. No catcher involved. Both Spanish speaking. Both from Venezuela. Ventura from the Dominican Republic. But it's sometimes one infielder will come in, sometimes an infielder will come in and join the catcher. But that time, the second baseman and the shortstop both made a trip to the mound. Probably just say don't worry about the runners. Two and one on Fowler. Royals pitched Fowler well in Houston. He was just one for 14 in that three game series. The Royals swept and he's late on a fastball and sprays it foul. Two balls, two strikes. Astros haven't fared very well with runners in scoring position averages. Just 215 this year. Fowler's hitting 267. He might have earned himself the first curve. That popped out of Sal's glove, but no advance. Three and two. Oh, he stayed right up there on him. That's been a pitch that he'll go to for a strikeout. There's action in the stands to see if he made the play. Yeah. yeah he did. Some style points. Showing a little biceps. I liked it. Ooh. Didn't like that. Bases loaded, nobody out. Sometimes you go to those secondary pitches. If that fastball is not working, and what's happening is his shoulder's pulling off, it's obvious. He's his arm is behind. His lower half, his shoulders pulling out. So Dave Island's going to say, hey, get that shoulder going right back down towards Salvi's target here. Stay right down through it. He's thrown 14 pitches and only five strikes. Now, on Tuesday against the White Sox, 21 of his first 27 pitches were strikes. So the complete opposite. He came out pounding the strike zone. He ended up having a few wild pitches in the game. And ended up taking the loss against Chicago, but he was a strike machine early in the game on Tuesday and now having difficulty with the strike zone tonight. And of those 14 pitches, 13 have been fastballs, and he hasn't thrown a curveball yet. Haven't seen it. 
two strikes. That's usually the one he tries to finish guys off with. He's going to have to go to do some pitching here. A high strike. Oh, and one on Castro. Jason Castro has homered six times. He also leads the league in strikeouts. And Ventura wouldn't mind that right here. Castro has struck out 58 times. Oh, and two. Maybe now we'll see that first curveball of the inning. Or, since he just threw a fastball right by him, I guess you say to Jason Castro, if you couldn't hit that one, how about this one? That's right. Sometimes off speed pitch in a certain count will speed the bat up. Still 0 and 2. Astros hitting 182 with them loaded this year. I think Ventura would gladly get two and let him have that run. On the ground to Hosmer, he'll step on the bag, and that's the only play. Altuve scores. So Castro gets an RBI. Springer goes to third, and Fowler moves up to second base. He hits that a little bit harder. The great throwing arm that Gold Glover Eric Hosmer has at first. He would have came right home, I'm sure, and maybe tried to get Salvi to get him back out at first, but just hit the top of it. Two hopper. Didn't have enough on it. Matt Dominguez with runners at second and third, and that was in on his hands. Dominguez with seven home runs. He was one for three against Ventura when the Astros faced him back in April. One and one. having a pretty good year. He's continuing to mature. His plate discipline's gotten better. Here's the first breaking ball. Tagging a third is Springer. He has very good speed. Aoki will play it to third. And in safely is Fowler as Dominguez gets a sacrifice fly and the Astros take a 2 nothing lead. Ball carried. Looked like it was going to be a pop up. I don't think Aoki had any chance at home with Springer. Fowler, he runs well as too, but it, it was off the mark. Hold him right there. And this is Mark Krause. He was not in the lineup against Ventura back in April. Fastball for strike one. That's a good spot, especially here at the K. You throw fastballs at 97 up that high, let them hit it all they want to center field. It's the ones that are down that guys can drive, just like that. Lorenzo Kane in shallow center field. That's the inning. Royals have allowed the fewest runs in the first inning in the league and a rare two run first tonight.
first inning, and here's a familiar looking lineup. It's a lot better looking, and Infante, he's the one that makes all the difference. As he's in that second spot, that pushes everybody down, puts Hosmer, Butler, Gordon, Perez all back into their normal position, so it lengthens the lineup, and that's a good look. Hopefully, it will click tonight for Ventura. They can pick him up. Facing Scott Feldman. And the Royals beat him back on April the 17th and shortly after that he went on the disabled list. He had some right biceps tendonitis and before losing to the Royals he was one of the hottest things going in the American League. Oh he's a veteran pitcher who knows how to pitch at six foot seven. He's the third tallest pitcher in Astros history behind Randy Johnson who was six ten and J.R. Richard who was six eight. So with that type of height you can leverage a sinker and he's made a good career off of that sinker. That's his pitch. He's going to cut it into righties. He's got a pretty good curveball and he'll throw it 37.7 percent of the time. So he's going to bring that curveball in as well and mix in a few changeups to lefties as well. Fastball at 89 for a strike to Nori. He had five hits in the Angels series over the weekend scored three times. And had a stolen base. Looks like he's scanning the right side of the infield. And he takes high and away one ball one strike in my opinion. This is a perfect fit Feldman is for this Royals offense. He's a ground ball pitcher and I mean extreme ground ball pitcher he, when he's on his game. He's given up a lot of worm burners. So the Royals are singles and doubles type hitters. If they can find some holes. They'll get that track meet started and they'll start running the bases and that's a good fit if they could just find the hole. Sometimes you hit them right at them. Got to know where your defense is and Aoki he's really good at checking out defenses and playing to them. And he bunts he didn't get it by Feldman that's what he was trying to do so it becomes an easy play. One out. Think about Aoki which is so unique I mean most hitters should be scanning the field before they get into the batter's box. Some will just do it before the first pitch. Everyone should do it before every pitch but Aoki he does it the very last second. I mean the pitchers in his motion and he's still looking around the infield. That's a little unusual. Some guys really need to start picking up that pitcher for the focus. Over on Fonte two road trips ago he strained his lower back in San Diego. This is his first game back and he swings to the first pitch and fouls it away. The problem for Omar from the very beginning was not swinging the bat. It was bending over to field a ground ball. And that's where baseball is such a unique sport. You see a lot of lower back problems a lot of hamstring problems because of all the standing around. And usually the first thing that tightens up when you've been standing around for a long time your hamstrings and your lower back. It can be. An injury that puts you on the disabled it's just like happened but hopefully he's all well now and they can get him back in there and he can get in his groove. They missed his offense. Two balls and one strike. Okay, that's not a big curve. But that's enough to change the eye level. Told you he's going to throw a lot of. Them. He likes to come inside and jam hitters. Pitches inside pretty well. That's a fair ball over the third base bag. And Fonte cruises into second base with a one out double. Tried to come inside. He was ready. Look at the head. Barely even moved. Eyes stayed on the ball. Got his top hand there and wrapped it right over the base. Castro reaching way in. That's a nice piece of hit. That's his first hit now in six at bats against Feldman. His his fundamentals with a bat in his hand are really fun to watch and teach because he's it's so simple and that's what you want to do as a hitter. Try to keep everything simple. It's hard enough. Just to try to make contact and square a good ball up. When you're moving around your heads moving your hands are moving your feet are moving you limit your chances for good contact. It's 
Osmer four hits a walk. And drove in two in the Angels series. Curveball is just slow enough to keep him off balance. And Grossman makes the play. And Fonte back to second base with two down. Defensively, now we highlight catchers quite a bit when they play the Royals because it's important they run. And he's caught 23.5 of base seaters. That's pretty good. If you have a 30% average throwing runners out, that's good. Really good. So he's, he's does a pretty nice job, but you know, you don't steal bases off catchers. You steal them off the pitcher. Feldman, he's fairly quick home. But a good jump by Escobar, Infante, or Aoki can get the job done. So Infante at second, two down, Billy Butler. Now Billy only had one hit in the Angels series, but he drove in two. I'm sure Billy wishes in more ways than one that the Angels were in the Royals division. Billy has 11 RBIs in his last two series in Anaheim. Four for his last nine with runners in scoring position. I mean, he can pick him up. Well hit into right field. The ball should carry tonight. Springer at the wall makes the catch in the corner. The wind is blowing from right to left. So that was hit high enough to go into a crosswind. And that may have cost Billy a two run home run. Second inning. Don't forget, fans, it's time now for you to tweet your photo using hashtag KC Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown during tonight's game broadcast. Brought to you by AT&T. Don't worry, little guy. We still have eight innings to play. That's right. Robbie Grossman just called up for the minor leagues. Leads off against Ventura. And Ventura who had difficulty throwing strikes to the first three hitters in the first inning. Right on target here to begin the second. That didn't take very long. First strikeout. Good changeup thrown by Ventura. While Ventura he hasn't won in a while. 
You got to go back to April the 25th. We're still talking about one of the best runs in Royals history as far as a rookie starter and ERA. In fact, fourth best ERA in his first 12 starts. Jose Rosado, who was an all star, our late colleague, Paul Splitorf, Hippolito Pichardo, the only three Royals with a lower ERA through 12 starts. Oh and two on Alex Presley five straight strikes thrown by Ventura. Yeah Robbie Grossman when he stepped in there fastball strike one curveball strike two, change up strike three. So he mixed in all three of his pitches. For that strikeout his first of the night. Salvi I think went it back in that dugout and talked with Dave Ireland said hey look let's let's just start mixing them. Ventura normally fields his position well and slings it over to first. And Hosmer with what is known as a snow cone just barely kept that ball in his glove for the second out. Oof. He feels his position well. He's a good athlete. And he can also throw sidearm. What a little flare with that follow through. He had to get it there quickly. Now look at Hosmer. Not that he said he hold that in there. He didn't move his glove. He didn't want the ball to fall out of it. He has a keen awareness for the feeling in that glove at the last that the last quarter inch of those gloves fielders know that ball they can feel it in there soft hands did we just see a new dance move that was a the ventura that was a swing your leg hard yeah. right hard left ooh right center field is gonzalez got a pitch up he can run. He's going to try for two, and Kane overran the ball. And Gonzalez is into second base with two outs. And he was trying for two all the way, so he'll be given a double. Off the bat, you're looking to, if you've got any kind of speed at all. And Lorenzo Kane, he, he after he threw the ball in, he kind of smiled and he's telling himself, wow, I, I usually don't miss when I go to pick up a ball. But these guys are only human. Nine pitches, all strikes in this inning. Ventura's first first 14 pitches, five were strikes, and now 17 of his last 18 have been strikes. Here's the first one out of the strike zone one and one on Altuve. He opened the game with a single to right and scored the first of two Astros runs in the first. Two and one. Late swing, look out. He's a tough out, this guy. He battles. Yeah, all five, six of him. Five foot six, 174 pounds. Has a lot of pride in his game. He's in his third season, and he's starting to understand that he's got to be strong. He, he might not be tall, but he went home last winter and worked out. He dropped 10 pounds. He put on a little muscle, and you can do that with the proper nutrition. And he said, I'm, I'm in this for the long haul. I'm going to help my team win. That's the kind of guy you want. He's dedicated. Nice block. Three and two. Not that all these guys aren't dedicated. They are. But some have a little more fire than others. And let's face it when you're five foot six trying to become a major league ball player you have to have a little extra fire because you're not going to be signed on site alone. No. Third walk allowed by Ventura.
He's not given that tonight. I think the strike zone was a little tight yesterday for Jason Vargas. I think it was. Yeah, I did too. So Springer with two on two out and he takes ball one. Springer walked in the first inning. He scored the second run coming home on a sack fly from Matt Dominguez. Ventura got two quick outs in this inning and then Gonzalez doubled and Altuve walked. One and one. Astros first round pick in 2011. George Springer and it was a big deal when he was called up during the Royals Astros series in the middle of April big spike in attendance and media coverage that day. Two and one. He is their top prospect or I guess he was their top prospect now that he's in the big leagues. He had a 30 30 season last year at least 30 home runs 30 stolen bases in the minor leagues. Remember that's a five month season not a full six month season like it is in the big leagues. That is blasted to center field no play for Lorenzo Kane and it hits the top of the wall. George Springer drives in two so with two outs and nobody on three straight reach and Houston has an early four nothing lead. That was a second cannon blast of the night that ball wasn't walking. Oh man. Anytime a center fielder here at the K turns and looks you know that ball was scorched. Altuve had a huge lead at first base. Hosmer was playing off of him with two outs, so he was able to score with no problem. And now Dexter Fowler with a runner at second. Fowler walked his first time up. And that was a dangerous pitch, a changeup that was up, and Fowler took it for a strike. Right side and that's past Infante. Here's Springer around third and Aoki will not throw to the plate. So four straight reach after two out. And now it's a three run second inning and the Astros lead five nothing. Dave Island's already making his second trip to the mound in as many innings. It's the first time all year that Ventura has allowed five runs and he's done it in an inning in two thirds. Yeah, Island's not used to going out there in consecutive innings. And you could see that ball to Infante's left. He doesn't didn't look real comfortable bending over and even attempting to dive at that. And I think that that's advisable. That's okay just coming off a of back injury. Jason Castro drove in a run last inning and he's hacking to the first pitch and fouls it away. Castro grounded out to Hosmer and scored Altuve from third base in the first inning. One and one. Ventura awfully young but he's been around long enough to know what they can do with that ball it's down the middle. Just like and that another base hit. Five straight have reached after two outs and nobody on.
tell you, Salvador Perez is probably the most frustrated out of anybody so far early in this game. And when you have three above average pitches like that, oh, I'll say two and a half. The change up is, is getting better. You have plenty to finish off an inning. It's not like you're a guy that's a soft tosser or throws 88 or 9 and you can't blow it by, guys. He's got what it takes to get out of this inning. But you got to stay on the corner like that. Coming up on 50 pitches in the game. Blocked by Sal, one ball, one strike. Two and one. He looks a little stressed. There is not a sense of urgency right here. Go out there and do what Dave Island wants you to do, and that's just trust your stuff and don't try to do any more. He didn't have to. That's perfect there. Best changeup he's thrown tonight. Was he listening? Was that a tip of the cap to you? No, I think that he's thinking the same way. Finish this guy off. We'll get some runs. Still two and two on Dominguez. He drove in the second run in the first inning. Talked about Dominguez. You know, he ranks third among AL third basemen in hits this year. He's tied for third in home runs with six. And he's got 14 walks. This kid Dominguez is coming on as a third baseman. Two best changeups he threw in the game, both to Dominguez. He strikes out his second, but the Royals are in a hole going to the bottom of the second, 5 0. Framley plan. Everyone gets unlimited talk, text, and one gig of data for as low as $25 per month per line while on the Sprint Network. Here's our question for tonight. Which Royals Hall of Famer was the Astros number one pick back in 1967? Remember, the more people added up to 10 total, the lower your rate. Plus, while you'll save as a team, all accounts can be billed individually with the Sprint Framley plan. Doesn't look like an easy question to me. However, with technology like it is, everything's at your fingertips. And I'd like to do that, but I've been warned 
not to do that. So I'll guess it anyway. Those are some pretty good Royals players on there, by the way. Mm -hmm. Alex, four hits, a couple of walks, two RBIs in the Angels series. Ten RBIs in his last seven games. And if you're looking for inspiration with the Royals down 5 nothing this early in the game, well, just go back to a week ago tonight when the White Sox were down 5 nothing to the Royals, and they ended up winning that game 7-6. One and two on Alex. That's where they want to look on Feldman. Make him get the ball up. I didn't have any trouble the last time they faced him. Of course, he went on the dis disabled list the next day, I believe. Or right after that. Everything was up. Alex will take that down in the count one and two. Easy for me to say that up here. But the Royals have the leadoff man on. Down 5 0. Uh, Feldman didn't want to do that. That's his sixth batter he's hit this year. And you know, you can't hurt that by. Are you kidding me? That thing's made of steel. Better check that ball and get that ball out of the playing field. It's got a dent in it. In for a strike to Salvador Perez. Sal yesterday with the Royals down 4 3 in the ninth inning. Hit a one out double against Ernesto Frieri. He advanced to third in the inning, but the Royals couldn't quite get him home. That looked like a hit and run swing without a hit and run. It did. And there he is coming inside. He likes to come in on guys. He's smart. You pitch inside, it opens up the out, outer part of the plate. That's part of the game, and it always has been in baseball. One ball, two strikes. With that swing by Sal, it reminds me of a Conversation I had with Ned Yost before the game tonight and just talking about the offense and is it mechanical now? Is it mental? And he said the guys just aren't seeing the ball well right now. And what that normally means is swinging at pitches out of the strike zone and at times taking pitches in the strike zone. One and two on Sal. What's normally going wrong when a hitter is not seeing the ball? I mean, it's not like he needs glasses, right? I mean, it's just no. you're over anxious and you're you're going up there wanting to hit the first pitch. When that's not what you're looking for. The first pitch could be one of four pitches the guy has. You have to hunt your pitch. Pulled and foul, still know, one ball, two strikes. Listen, I was a 261 career hitter. Okay. So look, I was I didn't light the world on fire. It's not easy, but you have to have a plan. And it took me several years to learn that you had to have a plan. And remember, these guys have only played two, three years in the majors. They're learning. They're still learning how to how to find their pitch and how to hunt it. So in some ways, you're suggesting there are times where maybe they've decided to swing before they even see the pitch. That's right. Made up in their minds, here's what's coming. I'm going to swing at it as opposed to just being relaxed. And reacting to what comes out of the pitcher's hand. Exactly. And in the minor leagues, you got guys with pretty good stuff, but they don't have a clue where it's going. And then when you get to the major leagues, you're facing a lot of pitchers like Feldman who got six, eight, ten years in, and they're all right around the plate. So in a sense, it makes it easier to hit. So you can go up there and guess and say, all right, I'm going to get, he's going to give me something over the plate. So it's a little bit easier up here. At least that was my experience. I thought it was. Popped up. 
Going to be a tough play. Three Astros charging, and Altuve comes out of nowhere and makes the play inside the line. He just robs Salvi of a base hit. Good concentration. When that ball goes up, second baseman knows that's his. You just got to be more vocal and call everybody off and take command. That's what he did. Till the last second or two, it looked like Kraus, the first baseman, and Springer, the right fielder, had the best shot. And Altuve just came sprinting over from second base. The way they like to shift, though, those those plays aren't as routine as they used to be. Altuve. Kane into right field. Alex will make the turn. And Springer's throw is cut off. First and third, one out. Nice to see Alex go to third base on that. He saw the play. He knew he knew he could he could do it. And down five runs. I don't care if that if he'd have made it out at second base. They got to get something going. And that's what he did. Kid's got a nice arm. See, he's making up his mind. He doesn't need to look over at Swain, the third base coach. He had not one look, but he had two looks before he made up his mind. He's going to third. Good decision. And now the Royals need to cash something in right here. Now see this Escobar. Two hits, couple of stolen bases, two runs scored in the Angels series. Kane runs, and Castro's throw is high and late. Royals have been running lately. That's their 14 stolen base in their last nine games. Royals are back to leading the American League in stolen bases. So no chance for a ground ball double play for the Astros. And Alcides Escobar has two runners in scoring position. Hit well to left field. Grossman makes the play. Alex tags and stops. Two down. Fair decision. Grossman doesn't have the strongest arm, but when that ball's hit with top spin and you're coming in 20 feet and you're down by five runs, if you don't make it, you're in trouble. So he said, you know, I think I'm going to stay, and I'm sure Swaim said stay, but ball was a little bit offline, so I, I, I'm not going to argue with that. I don't disagree. What do you think? You think he should have scored or tried to? Hmm. Okay, if he if he gets thrown out, then the inning's over. Right. Now you got a chance to get two with a base hit. Springer's way shallow and right though. If he goes on if he goes out there on the ground, it'll be tough to score Kane. Strike to Pedro Siriaco. He gets the third base assignment tonight. Danny Valencia, who Sprained his hand on Saturday night and ended up getting a double to fuel a Royals rally. Royals think he'll be out three, maybe five days. Shallow left, and Grossman is there to make the play. Royals strand two, and at the end of two, the Astros lead 5 0.
Uh, personally, I mean, uh, you know, to do what they do and fight for our country and uh, be able to allow us uh, in our country to do what, do what we do here is, uh, is pretty special. So um, much love and, and big thanks to those guys. And we thank James Shields for that. The Royals celebrating Memorial Day at Coffin Stadium. Some very emotional and stirring tributes before the game. And we have the thrill of welcoming to the broadcast booth Lieutenant General Bob Brown. He is the commanding general at Fort Leavenworth and has given 33 years of his life to serve our country. So first of all, we we thank you for that, General, and uh, for joining us in the booth. And, you know, I know it's there are some players like James Shields and and want to give their heartfelt thanks on a day like today. And, and, and we all try and do that. And I always wondered, you know, what, what does that actually mean to the military? Because sometimes it's just hard to find the right words. Right. James Shields did not to show our appreciation. Well, first, thanks for uh, having us here. I, I've been to a lot of Armed Forces days uh, around uh, the league, and this is the best I've seen by far. Mm -hmm. Amazing uh, earlier tribute to our uh, military. It means a great deal to the young soldiers, uh, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guard. You know, it, it makes them feel really special, mm -hmm. and it's, it's it's just such an honor. Uh, we're so fortunate to have the support of the American public and uh, Major League Baseball putting this on, and uh, uh, it, j it just really means the world. I've seen these young guys, their eyes get big, and they go, wow, they really are thanking me and it uh, means a lot to him. A whole this lot. right here was extremely emotional. Two families who had lost a member yeah, of yeah. their family and Alex Gordon and Greg Holland coming out and presenting a bouquet of flowers to the two families. And, you know, HUD played for a long time. I broadcasted for a long time. I grew up in the game. I mean, so Memorial Day for me is being at the ballpark and watching baseball and, and trying to, I don't know if celebrate is the right word, but to acknowledge this American holiday. But What's going on? What's going on at Fort Leavenworth? I mean, how, how does the military handle a day like this, you know, in their real world? Well, a great question. First, let me say, you know, those are gold star families that pay such a high price, losing a loved one, uh, serving their country, and our heart goes out to them. They're amazingly brave people. They continue to, to serve and help, and it was so great to have them honored here today. Up at Leavenworth, we had a Memorial Day ceremony uh, at the uh, National Cemetery. And uh, these four or five hundred folks came, retired folks from the community, and uh, just a uh, it, it's a way for us again to remember those fallen heroes and say thank you. And uh, we, we can never forget, we can never allow people to forget that there's those that go into harm's way uh, so we can enjoy the freedom that we uh, love so much. Uh, and, and so we're saying uh, our thanks to those heroes that, that uh, gave the full uh, last full measure of service, General. We had the distinct honor to be to go to Fort Bragg with Fox Fox put it together right. a bunch of baseball player current guys and some some ex broadcasters and or some players anyway they really cater to the gold star family mm. that's one of the things that impressed me the most they kept sending us towards the gold star family we held clinics for the gold star families right. and finally we're day two of this and I said could somebody tell me please what that means and, right and those are the families who lost a loved one that's right. And it goes back to World War One uh, when when a star would be put in the window and then when a family member was killed, it became a gold star. And I, I don't think there, we could never do enough. So thanks, first of all, for going. But, you know, it's oh, just it terrific a... for you to go to Fort Bragg, for Fox to put that together, because you can imagine for those families that means so much uh, to those children and, uh, and, and the uh, surviving spouses. It just means the world. So thanks for doing You're that. You're welcome, General. It was very moving for all of us in the party. But, you know, I got to meet one of your buddies, General Chin. Yep. Oh, and he told me you were coming to Leavenworth. <laughs> and he goes, you got to take care of him and, and have him out to the K, HUD. And I go, you know what? I will, but you beat me to it. Yeah, well, he's a great, uh, he served 33 years, an amazing combat leader, KK Chin. Uh, I'm so proud to be his classmate from West Point. Surprised he didn't uh, tell you to watch out. I, I played basketball for Coach Krzyzewski, Coach K at West Point. That's the reason I ended up going there. And uh, right. so KK knows I thought he'd, uh, he wouldn't let me uh, challenge you in horse or something. You know? <laughs> I got no chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you beat me to the punch. I was going to talk about your basketball days with uh, Coach Krzyzewski. And I wonder, do you, do you see any West Point still in him today as he coaches Duke? Oh, absolutely. I was just last weekend at a leadership conference with him, and we uh, did a leadership presentation together. He uses the discipline he learned in the military and at West Point constantly. And uh, 
and you know, I, I tell everybody, West Point's a great school, amazing leadership school, but I learned more about leadership on the uh, basketball court than anywhere else. Mm. And uh, I didn't know that was his first coaching job. I knew he was uh, an impressive guy. I didn't know how impressive, but uh, amazing leader. Astros get a base runner with two down as we continue to visit with Lieutenant General Bob Brown. He's the commanding general at Fort Leavenworth. So we try and do the best we can here on Memorial Day. And I wonder also what it's like overseas when troops get to watch a sporting event at home. And, you know, we always hope that we're bringing them a little bit closer to home. But what does sports mean to the men and women overseas? Well, I can guarantee you uh, there's folks watching this game, uh, Casey Royal fans. And what it is, you know, it's uh, America's game, America's pastime. And when you're when you're deployed, uh, you you uh, look at that and it's like being home. Uh, you know, I never got to watch a whole game, but you know, you watch a little bit and uh, it's it really helps you relax and just feel like you're home. And uh, it is truly I guarantee there's guys watching. We're very fortunate. The Armed Forces Network plays mm -hmm. it uh, when we're de deployed, plays a lot of the sporting events. So they uh, they are watching and a lot of KC fans. You saw them on the screen uh, beginning of the game is mm -hmm. pretty neat. That was Afghanistan. Uh, most of them uh, were there. Uh, yeah, but all over the world, uh, many, many countries, there's folks out there uh, working hard to prevent conflict and to keep the peace. And uh, watching baseball game is a great thing. And uh, any sporting event, you know, it, it, there's, so, there's so many parallels between sports and the military. Uh, and uh, that, that attitude is so important uh, and w winning is so key. General, it was impressive to watch your troops train. And they actually let us involved in some of the easier stuff. Mm -hmm. But 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 to see the discipline that they go through, it's much much like a, a a professional baseball player or a football player would go through. How how athletic do these soldiers have to be to support us? Yeah, no, they uh, there there are a lot of parallels, and uh, you know the the physical fitness is, is a key part. It is really you know when you're deployed, you'll wear protective gear that can weigh up to 50, 60 pounds, and then you're carrying uh, possibly up to another 150 pounds. Uh, these loads so you've got to be in great physical shape and you're in harsh conditions uh, you know extreme heat extreme cold so there are a lot of parallels and and uh, that's why there's just a great partnership uh, around uh, the military partnering with uh, university sports teams in their area local sports teams you kind of when you're in the military you, your uh, favorite team is the one closest to where you're at you know and you support them but uh, a lot of work physically and then some of the same challenges mentally You've got to be able to focus uh, with kind of chaos on around you, a stadium pack like the players on the field today. They've got to be able to focus, uh, you know, not be distracted. They've got to be able to concentrate. Uh, when the going gets tough, you, you know, we try to teach our soldiers to uh, focus even more and, uh, you know, and, and be able to, uh, to make those tough decisions. So uh, very similar to sports. A lot of analogies that are very true. Tricky play for Infante. Didn't quite get the out so Presley is safe at second and Gonzalez is aboard with an infield single general I'm careful up here to use terms that are in the war because this is not war this is just a baseball game it's a game but you know being in the foxhole with the guy you know having his back covering him you know hero uh, we use going, hero a lot yeah you know those those, those I, I've learned over the years since I've become more educated in the military to kind of don't use those terms as much as I do because it really doesn't weigh up perspective. This is this is not life or death. Your soldiers, you're training them for real battle, real conflicts. Well, yeah, it's uh, you know as a leader, uh, one of the toughest things you have to be able to look the parents in the eyes and say, look, we've done everything we can possibly do for your son or daughter. We've trained them as well as we possibly can. Otherwise, quite honestly, you just couldn't live with yourself. You know, so it, there's a lot of pressure. But uh, the, the, the great thing is we get amazing support uh, uh, in America. You know, when you look at many of these other militaries around the world, uh, we, we have the best equipment. We have the best soldiers. Uh, we get amazing support, as was demonstrated here tonight, the incredible support, the standing ovations for the families of the fallen, the standing ovations for the, for the military. So we're very fortunate. Uh, but it is, uh, it is very tough, rigorous, demanding training. It has to be that way because... Uh, you want the scrimmage to be tougher than the game, and we're very careful about not using too many sports analogies mm -hmm. as well, because it isn't, you know, it's life or death situations, but you really do want to train as hard as you can so that when you deploy, it's actually easier. One and one on Jose Altuve. 
I thought the uh, Royals would really, they were fired up when we were down in the pregame stuff, and they were excited about the uniforms. <laughs> so I thought they were going to jump out, and they'd be up 5 nothing. but I, I'm hoping they come back here. They seem like a great bunch, and I uh, hope they can come back. And that'll squib foul. Mention your long service to our country. Uh, your daughter and son-in-law the same, correct? Yeah, I'm very fortunate. My oldest daughter is a captain. Uh, she's She's been in, gosh, I guess about eight years now. Just got back from a deployment. Uh, and uh, it really highlights uh, today we have a lot of uh, dual military couples. They're both in the uh, military, and that's that's a tough thing. I think my uh, son-in-law is a captain uh, engineer. He's been deployed three times, mm -hmm. and my daughter's been deployed twice. In eight years of marriage, I think they've been apart five of those eight years. Mm -hmm. So it's very tough, or, and... Uh, but we're very fortunate uh, that they're uh, proud of their service. And I'm awful proud of them. I'm glad they chose to serve. Well, to borrow a military phrase, we've sure seen Jordano Ventura battle tonight, haven't we? Oh, I mean, <laughs> 78 pitches yeah. and, and just three innings. You know, and we all night, We've been saying either on the air or off the air. He just doesn't look right. Some just doesn't look the same about Jordano Ventura. And maybe we'll get a little insight into that now as Kyle Turner, Royals trainers out there to talk to him and as well as manager Ned Yost. I think you said that last inning uh, that it just doesn't look he, like Jordano Ventura tonight. Something's wrong. A stressed look on his mm. face. Mm. So we'll get a pitching change here and. It will be an emergency change, so whomever comes in will get all the time he needs to get ready. And that gives us plenty of time to thank you, General, for stopping by. And, uh, boy, it was just a, a special emotional day here today, and, and I, I know it's got to be even more so for you because you're, uh, you know, you're living day in and day, not, day in and day out with the men and women who are serving our country. So thanks for uh, taking a slice of the day and spending it with us. Oh, no doubt. Uh, our honor. And again, thanks uh, very much uh, to the Royals and Major League Baseball for just a terrific Armed Forces Day. And you could see and feel the pride of those young men and women uh, serving down there on the field. So it was just terrific. And how about a 94-year-old Viet uh, uh, Vietnam, uh, Korean, and then Normandy, World War II veteran. Unbelievable. Mm. Throwing in the first pitch. And <laughs> he got it right across the plate. He did. Saying, it was yeah. a strike. Incredible. It was a strike. Yeah. Well, you must know television pretty well because that's exactly where we were going. And this is <laughs> a veteran of World War II, Colonel Jack Brooks, with the best pitch of the day. Terrific. Thanks, General. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, General. You. Thanks very much. Look forward to seeing you at Fort Leavenworth. Yes, sir. In the top of the third inning. Michael Marriott who was just called up. From. Triple A. Yesterday. With the Royals. 
sending Francisco Pena down makes his first appearance since being called back up and thrown in not only in the middle of an inning but in the middle of a count. Giordano Ventura was removed with the count one ball and two strikes on Jose Altuve. Ventura gave up two runs in the first inning. He walked two. didn't look like his normal self in that inning and then with two outs and nobody on in the third inning five straight reached three scored. And in this inning with two outs and nobody on back to back hits and then with the count one and two Ned Yost and the training staff noticed something and Ventura came out. That ball will land in the stands and it's still one and two. You could only hope if you're a Royals fan that he was sick and he just had some type of virus and nothing else ailing him. Because he looked his uniform was soft and wet. We watched him as he was walking off. Maybe he had some kind of virus or something. We'll have to keep the people. We'll, we'll let you know. Runner going to third as Altuve hits it into right center and Lorenzo Kane makes the play to put an end to the top of the third. Staff Sergeant Jamie Jarbo was shot in Afghanistan paralyzing him from the chest down. Melissa spent his remaining months loving and caring for him. And after he passed away in 2012 Melissa decided to use her life to fulfill her husband's dying wish of helping other veterans. Creating the Military Veteran Project in honor of her late husband. Melissa uses the charity to educate and honor military veterans and their families. And if Buck were with us today, Buck would say, ma'am, you sit right here in this seat. No question. What an honor. Aoki is showing bunt and takes low against Scott Feldman. And Nori tried to bunt his way on in the first inning, tried to drag it to the first base side. He didn't quite get it by the mound. And Feldman was able to glove it and throw him out. One ball one strike. Well fans we hope you'll come to enjoy a weekend series with the Yankees coming to town June 6th through the 9th. You'll see Derek Jeter's last trip to Kauffman Stadium. The series includes summer fireworks and a Nori Aoki poster giveaway. As Nori goes the other way and Grossman makes the play in left field. One down in the third. The summer fireworks is June 6 presented by Hy-Vee and Pepsi and the Nori Aoki poster giveaway is to the first 10,000 fans on June 8 presented by Magnaflex and Pitcraft Printing. 
Plenty of tickets are still available and that's a four game wraparound series Friday Saturday Sunday to Monday night 1-800-6 Royals or Royals.com for tickets. Omar Infante in his first game back from the disabled list and he doubled in the first inning. A low ball one. One and one on Infante. And HUD told you when Omar doubled in the first inning. That was his first career hit against Scott Feldman. Up the middle. Gonzalez cuts it off and throws out Infante two down. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in today's game brought to you by Miller Lite. Two down to Eric Hosmer who flied to left in the first inning and Feldman got him to chase a slow curveball. It was just too tempting to lay off of it and Hosmer flied to left on the first pitch. A little bit high for ball one. Just foul. One ball, one strike. Eric Hosmer, remember last year, led the league in multi hit games with 60. And our Toyota League leader shows us that if you combine last year and this year, Eric Hosmer has the most multi hit games in the American League 77. One ball, two strikes here against Feldman. Third base umpire, he had to really duck on that ball Hosmer hit. You say his last name is Ripiger? He's new. Mark Ripiger. I went with Ripperger. Okay, that's but that's, that's I'm going with you. Ripperger. But since you are a master of the English language, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Perhaps it is Ripperger. <laughs> no. I'm going with you, bud. Still two and two. Here's Mark Ripperger and there have been a lot of young umpires we've had to become familiar with this year because of the added crews. One crew always in New York with the at the replay command center. It's been a great opportunity for young umpires like Mark Ripperger who's a minor league umpire called up to be part of this crew here while somebody gets a chance to go home and then some of the former minor league umpires now are full time umpires in the big leagues. You're totally correct. Those guys do 10 plus years in the minors. Before they even get a sniff up here. Mark. He's been a professional since 03. He's worked in the Arizona Fall League Northwest League Cal League. PCL. So that's opened up the door for a lot of these guys to get here sooner. May have noticed on the left sleeve of the umpires. The initials WB and that's for Wally Bell. He died of a heart attack during the offseason. 21 years a major league umpire. Feldman gets to the bag in front of Hosmer and Feldman has his first one two three inning. We've played three and the Astros have a five nothing lead.
It's three years ago yesterday that the great Paul Splittorf passed away. And on this date in 1984, he earned his 166th and final win as a Royal. It was at Fenway Park. 166 wins is the all time record in Royals history. Split spent parts of 15 years pitching for the Royals and 24 years as a television analyst. And there is his likeness out at Rivals in right field where he spent many nights with Joel Goldberg. Royals live pregame and postgame shows. Joel was nice enough to have me on. Ivy Royals live yesterday to talk about Paul Splitorf and. He asked me to tell some stories and I know that. In the interest of time I really couldn't get into any. Long stories about split there were so many but you just reminded me of a. A great one involving. Split. And maybe his best friend in the game Steve Busby. George Springer. Deep right center field. And for the second time the Royals just barely keep him in the ballpark. He's on base for the third straight time. That's his second double of the game. He's already scored twice and driven into. He's some kind of talent. He went off the center field wall on the line against Ventura and then this time he's. Able to shorten up his swing. See that left foot it still. Gets on the edge like that and opens all the way up. Wonder if he tapes that ankle. That thing looks like it could roll over. Anyway, Ryan, that story, you know, and I've, I've, I've heard a lot of split stories, and he's told me a lot over the years. But I don't remember hearing that that story that that you were going to tell. September 20th 1972 the Royals were at California to play the Angels back when they were the California Angels. The attendance was 4117. So that meant it was very easy for individual voices to be heard whether it was somebody in the crowd or maybe a player in the dugout. And when I say maybe a player in the dugout. I'm talking about a player. Chewing on one of the umpires. The Royals were not happy with the first base umpire that particular night. And so they were ragging on him and this was a bigger umpire. Meanwhile Freddie Patek is being intentionally walked. To bring Steve Busby to the plate and I go back to 1972 that was the last year before the designated hitter so the pitchers hit for themselves. So here's Busby a young pitcher coming up with the bases loaded by the way. And. The first base umpire had heard enough. And right as the pitcher was about to deliver a pitch. To Steve Busby the umpire says time. Well the pitcher continued to throw. The pitch comes in and Steve Busby hits what he thinks. Is a grand slam. And he's from California. Oh my God. So of that. Forty one hundred that was there that night. Three thousand of them might have been Steve Busby's. Friends and family so he's starting his trot. Only to notice the first base umpire is waving his arms. Time had been called before the pitch. Oh. Uh, Nobody really got to the bottom as to what happened, but Paul Splitarf always knew that it was him who had the final words that led to the umpire calling timeout and wiped away Steve Busby's potential grand slam. And I asked Split, did you ever fess up to Steve Busby that you were the guy? He said, I did. Steve Busby had a lot of arm problems and that. Led to him having a very short career premature career. And when he was recovering. In the hospital coming out of the anesthetic after having shoulder surgery. That's when as split put it. You know I put my heart on the line and I opened up to him and told him what had happened in Anaheim. Oh, and with goodness. this glassy look in Steve Busby's eyes. Split wasn't so sure whether Steve understood what he was saying or not but in splits mind. He confessed. He told him. <laughs> oh, that was crushing. Uh oh, he balked. So that puts Springer at third with nobody out. And I tell you, it was so much fun to be around Split all the time. But if you could ever sit at the dinner table or the lunch table 
when he and Steve Busby were there at the same time, it was best just to sit back and listen. I mean, it was about as entertaining oh, as it gets. That's the greatest. What a story that is. Fowler walks for the second time, and that's four walks given up by Royals pitching. And if you weren't with us last inning, Jordano Ventura in the middle of pitching to Jose Altuve in the third inning was removed from the game. Marriott came on and got Altuve to fly out to center field. And now Marriott in some trouble with runners at first and third and nobody out, and the Royals already down 5 0. Fowler with those two walks gives him 21 in this month. That's unbelievable. That was that's second in the AL coming in. Now maybe he's first now. Ball one to Jason Castro, who is driven in a run with a ground out, and he's also singled. Marriott got enough of it to allow the Royals to turn a double play. Otherwise, that ball might go into center field. So a run scores to make it 6 0. But the Royals get a 1 4 6 3 double play. I mean, he ticked it just enough. Oh. So it's Matt Dominguez with two outs and nobody on and he drove in a run in the first inning. The Astros have scored in three of four innings tonight. Two in the first three in the second. And one here in the fourth. That double play gives the Royals 31 double plays this year. That's tied for the least amount of double plays in the league with Tampa Bay. And you know with all the fly ball pitchers the Royals have that pretty much explains it. That's always I felt a deceiving statistic because if you lead the league in double plays that means there's a lot of runners on who are the teams that lead the league in double plays Baltimore Cleveland Chicago are the top three and what are some of those 52 team ERA 52 yeah we'll have to look in there that's always a statistic you want to take a second look at hey we lead the league in double plays. Now well, that usually means there's a lot of runners on base. Chicago's last with a 4 7 1. 2 and 2 on Dominguez. Baltimore has a 4 1 3. So it's not always a reflection of how good your defense is. Right. Where you rank in the league as far as double plays. Hit hard to left field, but Alex is right there for the out. The Astros, with all that power, and normally they rely on the home run for offense, they have not hit a home run tonight, but they lead 6 0.
Royals baseball is brought to you by Panera coming soon to College and King in Overland Park. And by your Midwest Ford dealer. Visit us at your Midwest Ford dealers.com. On this Memorial Day, Fox Sports supports is especially proud to recognize the Army's Gold Star Pin Campaign, which honors the families of fallen service members. To learn more, visit goldstarpins.org. Royals down 6 nothing as they bat in the fourth inning. Scott Feldman gets Billy Butler who came close to hitting a two run home run in the first inning. Then Alex Gordon and Salvador Perez. One ball one strike. Meantime Feldman's going out there and just executing his pitches. So nice when you have a six run cushion. He can just. Mix in some curveballs. That's a tough luck 0 for 2 tonight. Billy hits it hard again, caught by Fowler in center field, one down. Vote for the Royals Player of the Month at rallyhouse.com slash Royals, and you'll be entered to win a majestic prize back from Rally House. Alex was hit by a pitch his first time, hit by a 1 2 pitch. That was the Royals' best scoring threat in that second inning. Royals had runners at first and third and one out, but Feldman got Escobar to line to left and Siriaco to fly to left. That's out of play, no balls and two strikes. That 88 mile an hour fastball looks good, about belt high, a little bit above the belt. Wide open on the left side as Alex goes against the defense and singles with one out. Well, this is the Scott Feldman that was leading up to his start against the Royals on April the 17th. In his first three prior to facing the Royals, 2 0 with an ERA of less than half a run. Then the Royals beat him. Royal scored five runs against Feldman in six innings. He went on the disabled list with a biceps strain. And since then, 0 and 2 with an ERA of over five and a half. But as you said, a veteran who knows how to pitch with a big lead. Look out. <clears throat> I believe that hit an empty seat. Thank goodness. Very little reaction time. Didn't know there was any empty seats here tonight. And this place is well attended. Fox Sports Kansas City sponsoring a giveaway tonight a Royals military jersey white Royals jersey with the camouflage lettering and they were lined up early. I mean it was a long line to get into the ballpark around four o'clock. Stroked into center field. Fowler makes the play Alex back to tag and Fowler's throw is high and over Altuve. So the 5 6 Altuve is backed up by the 6 7 Feldman. And Gordon's in second base with two down. Alex is doing everything he possibly can out there on the bases.
And now Lorenzo Kane, and he singled to right his first time and also stole a base his sixth of the year. Didn't mean to do it. 0 and 1. Did you get a chance to read Andy McCullough's story on Lorenzo Kane in the Kansas City Star yesterday? Didn't get a chance. Great story. If you get a chance to go to kcstar.com. Here he is now, a major leaguer, everyday center fielder. But the story is incredible. I mean, it really is. He didn't really start playing baseball until 10th grade and really didn't know what he was doing out there. Didn't become a regular player until his senior year in high school, and the Brewers drafted him. And if you haven't read it, I had a chance to talk to Andy about it yesterday in Anaheim, and Andy said everybody he talked to about the story, the first thing that came out of their mouth was, now this is a true story. What I'm about to tell you is a true story. It's how unlikely the journey for Lorenzo Kane to the big leagues is I've never heard of another major league baseball player that started that late so I can understand that comment cut from the ninth grade basketball team in high school his mom wouldn't let him play football so after feeling sorry for himself for a year he decided to try out baseball because a buddy of his played baseball and he was literally starting from scratch And a base hit into center field. That could put the Royals on the board. Fowler, pretty good throw, but it hit the side of the mound and kicked away. Two hits for Kane tonight, and it's 6-1. This offense is capable. It's right down the middle. Short to the ball with his swing. Nothing wrong with that at all. A couple of bloops and a blast, and they're right back in it. That's why it's so hard for center fielders to throw guys out at the plate because of the pitcher's mouth. Lorenzo Kane now in his last 10 at bats with runners in scoring position is hitting 500. So it's a start. Royals are on the board for the first time, and now Escobar, and he lined to left his first time up. Ball one. Blocked by Castro. Two balls and no strikes. I timed that delivery right there from when he started his delivery home to Castro's mitt, and I got one, four, five. So anything under or anything right at one, three gives a base runner a good chance to steal a bag. So he's not as quick home as I thought he was. He's got a kind of a high leg kick. Anything over one three is a good time to give the runner a, a, a high percentage of stealing the base. Rusty Koontz doing the same thing with his stopwatch. Still wearing that brace on his left arm. Remember he broke his arm when he was hit by a Salvador Perez line drive during batting practice when the Royals were in Cleveland. Three and one.
And that is inside for a walk. Feldman's first. And the Royals have two on for Pedro Siriaco. Bo Porter, the former Iowa Hawkeye baseball and football player. Second year as manager of the Astros. Astros are at the tail end of a long road trip. Ten days through Anaheim, Seattle, and now Kansas City. They're three and four so far. They won their last two in Seattle. Strike over the outside to Siriaco. Siriaco with two on, two out in the second inning, flied to left field. And now two on, two out in the fourth with Kane at second, Escobar at first. Blocked again by Castro. One ball, one strike. Feldman has really slowed down his tempo in this inning. Pretty much rapid fire in the first three. And why not? A big lead. He only allowed a total of three runners in the first three innings. Well, those have finally broken through here in the fourth. Two and one. Most pitchers will tell you that when their tempo slows down, they are not aware of it. That it normally takes the catcher or a pitching coach, or in some cases the manager, to come out and tell them to speed up. Got the call. Two and two. Siriaco wants to shorten up his swing right here and just try to find a hole. Don't try to overswing. Put it in play. Second time that Feldman's been worried about Kane. With a five run lead. Kane and Escobar. Siriaco yesterday in the Royals three run third inning with two strikes. Remember, just put the bat on the ball and yeah. blooped the ball in right center field, ended up with an RBI double. And we'll do it again. Ed Yost yesterday used Jimmy Paredes. At third base. Siriaco tonight. Talking to Danny Valencia yesterday. He was hoping two to three games. And that's all he would need to be able to come back and swing with his sprained left hand. Ned Yost saying it might be closer to three to five days. Runners go and Siriaco pounds it on the ground to short. And Gonzalez. Got a little too casual and it was very close. Ned Yost is going to come out. So hang on. Kerwin Danley is the first base umpire. Siriaco reacted immediately, thinking that he was safe. And after Bill DePlissy, the Royals replay coordinator, got a Another look at the play. 
He felt that Kerwin Danley got it right. He relays that message to the Royals bench. And Ned Yost will not use his challenge. What a pleasure it was earlier tonight to be part of giving away the Fox Sports Kansas City camouflage Royals jerseys. Had a tough time could Nancy see he didn't want anything to do with my jersey and then this gal here look at how she has to think about it. Would you like a jersey ma'am. Um, <laughs> oh you did you get in. How about a jersey in five dollars. OK. <laughs> yeah. uh, nice it talking was fun. No it was fun. We don't get a chance to go out there and mingle with the people. It, it was it was a great time. I, I loved it. The fans were excited to be here. Six one Astros to the fifth inning. Mark Krause, Robbie Grossman and Alex Presley coming up for the Astros. They have scored in three of the first four innings two in the first. Three in the second those five runs charged to Ventura who went two and two thirds innings and a run charge to Michael Marriott who came on with two outs in the third. We still have not heard why Jordano Ventura came out with two outs in the third inning in the middle of an at bat with Jose Altuve. Royals trainer. Kyle Turner and manager Ned Yost went to the mound talked very briefly with Ventura and removed him from the game as he allowed a season high five runs in fewer than three innings. Two and two big opportunity for Marriott. Do all you can to hold him down team comes back and wins. Your stock rises, especially in your manager's eyes. Full count on Kraus. Second time Michael Marriott has been with the Royals called up the first time when Francis Lee Bueno went on the disabled list. And then when. Homer Infante's back began to bother him the Royals called up Johnny Giovatella and sent Marriott back down he was there for a couple of weeks and called back up yesterday. He's got 90 to 93 mile an hour fastball sliders his best secondary pitch. He goes with a curve and a change. He'll he'll work all of them in. Oh, 
on the ground to Hosmer. He will take it himself. One down in the fifth. Robbie Grossman to the plate, and we go to Joe Goldberg. Well, Ryan, it was interesting listening to Astros manager Bo Porter before the game being asked about Robbie Grossman being called up, and he said, you mean Mike? It's great to have Mike back. And everybody in the Houston media kind of did a double take and said, wait a minute, why are you calling Robbie Mike? You're not going to find this in any media guide or any bio of Robbie Grossman. He's never been called Mike before, but the story goes like this. Last year, he was sent down around this time of the year he was hitting 125 when he came back up he hit the ball really hard and Carlos Pena turned in the dugout and said man that Mike looks really good because he <laughs> forgot his name from that point on the rest of the year he hit 322 well this year he was hitting 125 when he got sent down and so he came back up and there you go Robbie it is good to have him back I said to Bo I said why weren't you calling him Mike earlier in the year? And he said, this could have been avoided. I should have paid more attention. He turned and yelled, hey, hey, Mike. As Robbie was walking by, he looked over, waved, and moved on. So <laughs> Mike Grossman, they're either calling him Robbie right now, and that's why he is 0 for 3, or who knows? You know how superstitions go. Baseball players aren't superstitious, are oh, they, Hood? That's a beautiful story. Thank you, Joel. Call me whatever you want, as long as those hits are coming. Alex Presley singled in the third inning. He's also grounded back to the mound. Slider is in for a strike. Oh and two. We hope you'll come celebrate the tradition of baseball with the Royals on Father Daughter Day. That's Sunday, June the 8th. The Royals take on the Yankees. As part of this special ticket package, you'll receive a limited edition Royals hat and a commemorative framed photo. So don't miss your chance to spend the day at the K with loved ones. Father Daughter Day, June 8th. Royals.com slash family for tickets. That's a great opportunity for dads to take their daughters out. That's a very special day. Folks, come on out. Second time that Marriott has got an Astros hitter to chase a pitch down and in the dirt. He struck out Grossman. Presley just got a piece of that pitch. To stay alive. Salvi catches that before it hits the ground. He's out. This time Presley lays off of it. Two and two. Michael Marriott, the former. Nebraska Cornhusker the Royals took him in the eighth round in 2010 and just like Alex Gordon when Marriott was at Nebraska he played with some future major leaguers Cody Ashey Dan Jennings Thad Weber and now Alex will try and chase it down in the left field corner as Presley is on with two down. Nine hits for the Astros in fewer than five innings. That's how you go with a pitch. Just that's a great two strike approach. Didn't try to do too much. That's exactly what he was hoping for. It would at least stay fair and it did. And now Marwin Gonzalez. And he's two for two tonight with a run scored. 
If that name rings a bell and you don't know why. Marwin Gonzalez. His name was back in the news. A few weeks ago remember when you Darvish lost his no hitter. With two outs in the ninth inning. Mm -hmm. Against the Boston Red Sox. Well then you started seeing replays of Marwin Gonzalez last year breaking up Darvish's perfect game. With two outs in the ninth inning. That's his third hit of the game. Presley will be waved home and Aoki's throw is late and going to second base is Gonzalez as the Astros are back to their second six run lead of the night. It's too much of the plate. So here's the team with the lowest team batting average in the league the fewest runs scored in the league. They've scored seven runs ten hits and now they've scored in four of five innings. Out to Infante and Omar throws out Altuve who's been on a couple of times. Ten hits now for the Astros. They've done that 11 of their last 16 games as their offense warms up. Royals baseball is brought to you by Steel. Find a helpful servicing steel dealer near you. Visit steeldealers.com. And by Five Hour Energy. Helps recognize those who put others first. Royals down 7 1. Scott Feldman has given up one run four hits in his first four innings. He has retired Nori Aoki twice. One ball one strike Nori tried to bunt his way on in the first inning. And Feldman made the play in between the mound and first base. And then Nori flied to left in the third. One and two. Scott Feldman 31 years old. And a good scouting decision by the Texas Rangers 11 years ago. He was a 30th round pick. Thirtieth round out of San Mateo Junior College. Feldman was born in Hawaii. His father was an FBI agent. And then moved the family to the Bay Area, and that's where Feldman grew up. And when he was at San Mateo Junior College, 
the hitting coach and catching instructor on that team was Bill Duplissy, who was the Royals' longtime bullpen catcher and now their replay coordinator. And I asked Duper, I said, now how did Scott Feldman get drafted in the 30th round? And he said, I don't know. He was great in junior college in a very baseball rich state, the state of California, but he dropped to the 30th round and the Rangers picked him up. Back in 2009, he went 17 and 8 and had some knee problems and struggled over the next four years. This is his first season with the Houston Astros. Still two and two on Nori. Guy this big, 6'7, drafted in the 30th round. I was expecting some sort of a story. Well, he was an outfielder. And they thought they'd make him a pitcher, so he went draft, went in the 30th round. Or he had arm surgery, and that scared some teams off. Close play at first. And now Nori playing umpire, and he signaled safe after Kerwin Danley called him out. And Ned Yos comes up the steps. But there you go. That's what Bill DePlissy, who we were just talking about, was looking at and made the quick call to the Royals' dugout. And Ned Yost didn't even get out of the dugout. That's great hustle. That's a three hopper to the second baseman, Aoki. Of course, he's running out of the box. I love that. Almost got him a base hit to the ground ball to the second baseman. It's called. Giving it up for the team and for the paying customer. And there are a lot of paying customers here tonight. They can get back in it. I get some guys on and get a big hit. Two and one on Omar. He doubled in the first inning. First at bat coming back from the disabled list and grounded out to short in the third. Gonzalez throws him out. Two down in the fifth. Academy Sports and Outdoors gives us our leaderboard for tonight. Back in Houston in April, the Astros scored seven runs in the three game series. Four extra base hits in the three games. How about tonight? Seven runs, four extra base hits, and they've hit a combined 435. I think uh, coming into this game, they were saying, all right, we let Ventura beat us for his first major league win back at our place. Tonight, let's get him back. And they didn't miss any any balls out over the middle, especially early in that game tonight. We just found out in between innings why Jordano Ventura was removed in the top of the third inning. Right elbow lateral soreness. So that would mean the outside of the elbow was bothering Ventura. And from the first inning, just in his demeanor, you got the feeling, as you put it, he was stressed. He just didn't look like his normal relaxed self on the mound. Now, didn't affect the radar gun. There was plenty of 96s and 97s. Maybe that had something to do with him throwing very few breaking balls. It's possible. Because in the first inning, he had Castro down. He had a couple of guys with two strikes, and we didn't see the curve, and that's usually what he would finish guys off with. Crack bat, and Gonzalez gets Hosmer. Eric is 0 for 3. 
And the Royals are down one, two, three in the fifth inning. Scott Feldman with a big lead has given up just one run, four hits in his five innings. Astros with a 7-1 lead as we go to the top of the sixth inning and we welcome in Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery. We just found out an inning ago the Jordano Ventura came out in the third inning. Lateral right elbow soreness so soreness on the outside of his elbow well for him on his on his right elbow. And um, we don't know the answer to this question but you know could that be why he just maybe stayed with it seemed like his fastball almost the whole night well for him that was just two and two thirds innings right he just seemed very tentative at night like he wasn't himself he didn't really want to go to his off pitches as much maybe in the back of his mind he had a little concern that something was going on in there with his arm and whenever you don't have the the right feel whenever you don't have the right I guess the the, the right confidence in your stuff and your velocity and your ability to break off pitches you're just going to stay with that fastball and he didn't have good command of it and it wasn't what I saw as his Really crisp fastball either. Didn't have that explosiveness that we're accustomed to seeing out of his fastball. Monty, I noticed on those three pitches that we saw there that he was falling off to the right side. And when he's on, his balance is so well, so good, he's throwing usually, typically, and then he gets right in fielding position. He's not pulling off to the left. And that's looked like to me what he was doing right exactly he got out of his mechanics and as a result of doing that he was falling off and having all that that momentum going toward the first base side. Boy George Springer is looking exactly like what the Astros thought he was going to be tonight. And this has been going on for a while for him. He is three for three with a walk. So on for the fourth time as he singles to begin the sixth inning. Dexter Fowler has been on three times tonight. He has walked twice and he has an RBI single. Fastball is inside ball one. Springer's red hot. That's a good curveball there. I mean it was up a little bit. But he's used the whole field. And you can tell he's established confidence since his call up. Earlier in the year when the Royals faced him earlier I heard you say earlier Rex how he's found a way to slow that game down and so important for a player to feel comfortable and not trying to be you know forcing things and just letting the game happen and that's when you're able to slow the game down the way that he at a very young age has been able to do. That ball is scalded into right field. 12 hits for the Astros and they're batting in the sixth inning with nobody out. Last half at the end of the inning Ryan you said they've got 10 hits. In 11 of the last 16 games mm -hmm. they're heating up. Yep. That's what it is. Royals offense is going to do the same. We want to start next half inning. 
And Fowler's a guy that after moving to the third slot in the lineup has really been productive. A lot of times you see guys, you know, that's a really a, a stressful position to be in, but he's really welcomed that opportunity and delivered. Yeah, how many players do you see thrive hitting first or second or sixth or seventh and you put them in one of those high profile spots third or fourth and it doesn't matter what the manager or hitting coach says you know be yourself don't change because you're in the role I mean I think human nature tells you you have to do more when you hit in those spots 15th 16th and 17th of April when the Royals were there Fowler looked lost yeah, he was like a strikeout machine. I think he had one hit and 14 or 15 at bats. He just even, wasn't the same guy. Even defensively, there were some balls falling all around him. He was one for 14 in that series. Dexter okay. Fowler was. The, the, the game is incredible. It's a timing game. Monty, were you ever out in the bullpen? You felt something wrong with your arm or your leg or something, and then when you came in, you were thinking about that? I absolutely times, but ordinarily, if you're not hurt, if you're just sore or whatever, you get out in the game, the adrenaline takes over, and you're able to get through it. But if you're hurt, like unfortunately, maybe with this discomfort in the lateral el elbow area for Jordano Ventura, it's on your mind and the adrenaline, it doesn't matter. You're not able to eliminate that concern because you don't want to hurt yourself worse, especially if it's in your arm and you're a pitcher. You have to find a way to, to hopefully get through it. But it was obvious tonight that he had something on his mind. And you know, I, I think one thing worth noting, Brian, being on the lateral side of the elbow, that's not the side of the elbow that is hurt when guys have the Tommy John surgery. So I think that's a really good sign. That's the ulnar side. Yeah, it's a medial side. Medial side. Yes. But the ulnar collateral ligament. Correct. The dreaded ulnar collateral ligament. Okay. ligament. That's what I always hear. Yes. There has been a rash of injuries involving the ulnar collateral ligament. Now, the ulnar collateral ligament in the elbow is what leads to Tommy John surgery, and there's been so many guys who have Tommy John surgery, but how about all the guys with the ulnar lateral ligament in their thumb? I mean, that's the other rash of injuries we're seeing this year, and almost every time somebody's sliding in headfirst. Seems like at least once a week, somebody is going down with a bruised thumb, a torn thumb, a dislocated thumb. Monty is and I had showing that me a big old actually, scar. Uh, earlier in my career, and they call it the gamekeeper's thumb, and a lot of skiers do it, wrestlers do it. When you come down and you put all that stress, it, it tears that tendon or ligament in there, and you end up having to have a repair job. Kane coming up in center field. It'll drop in front of him. Coming around third is Springer. Kane's throw is in front of home plate. The Astros have now scored in five of six innings. And now they have their biggest lead of the night, 8 1. Marriott executed that where he wanted it. It was down. He just reached out and doinked it in there. When you're pitching in a game like this, it seems like everything you throw up there, whether it's a quality pitch or not quality pitch, seems like it has a much better chance of finding some grass in the outfield. Kauffman Stadium seems kind of big tonight, doesn't it? Yep. <laughs> it's like Gordon, Kane, and Ioki are trying to cover 100 acres out there. It's just There have been many balls hit hard, don't get me wrong, but there have also been quite a few balls that have not been hit that hard and just hit in the right spot. One and one on Dominguez. He has driven in one of the eight runs with a first inning sacrifice fly. Otherwise, 0 for 2 tonight. Dominguez, Kraus, and Grossman, the six, seven, eight hitters, the only ones in the lineup without a hit. 
Everyone else except for Altuve has more than one hit. And now Lewis Coleman gets ready in the Royals bullpen. Marriott has been in there since the third. Blocked by Sal. Two and two. Marriott strikes out his second, one down in the sixth. And Marriott's job here is to really do everything he can to save that bullpen. Stretch it out as long as you can. You get the strikeout now here. You're one pitch away from maybe a ground ball double play and get out of this inning. Mark Krause has struck out, grounded out, flight out, 0 for 3. Any team on any given night can beat another team. That's baseball, and it, it's always been that way. However, statistics, they do tell the overall story up to the day what's going on. But it, it's not going to get any easier once Houston leaves. Toronto for four, St. Louis for four. New York for four. You know, there's going to be some pretty good teams, and I'm hoping that something will ignite the offense and they can get that swagger back. Seems like to me the offense has lost their swagger, and that happens when when you you know you're not clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, and when you do score some runs and you get them early, you want to add on and just kind of keep that thing going. And like with that uh, series against the Angels. Yesterday's game is a good example. You get some runs and you want to try to expand that lead, get some opportunity. So it just provides that extra cushion for the pen. And until the offense really starts to click, it's going to be high stress, especially on this pitching staff. Two and two. Marriott has gone two and two thirds innings tonight. Back on May the 11th, he pitched two and two thirds for Omaha. Just looking at his day by days with Omaha, he's been anywhere from one inning to two inning for the most part, with a high of two and two thirds. Three and two. It looked like right before that pitch came in, a bird flew in front of home plate. That can be a distraction for the hitter trying to keep his eye. I saw it. Here it comes. See that. The Royals have been training that bird all spring <laughs> to do exactly that, trying to distract the hitter right before the pitch comes in. But Marriott has to throw a strike. <laughs> Right or it doesn't work. <laughs> but when you're hungry, nothing stops you from getting a meal. And there are moths flying around the field. There there he is. Better, they better hope that Randy Johnson doesn't come back in the league. <laughs> oh. Randy Johnson hit that bird in spring training. It looked like he hit a box of feathers. Hosmer backhands. Thought about second base. He'll take the sure out. Kraus is out. Other runners move up. Fowler goes to third and Castro up to second base. There he is getting ready for the next pitch. Yes, he just left now. His timing's off tonight. Hosmer, that was smart. Just take the easy out at this point.
Is that a gold finch that's flying around? Rex, I'll leave that one up yeah. to you. If you'll give me a moment, I'll Google it. Well, I can Google it. I don't know what kind of bird that is. Our director, Steve Kurtenbach, who is from Iowa, thinks it's a northeastern gold finch, which is the state bird of Iowa. Okay, there you go. There's an expert. And thankfully, that conversation's coming to an end as Infante throws out Grossman to end the sixth inning. You were setting me up. I know. <laughs> I felt that coming. It's a gold finch, and he needs to fly a lot more active around the, their hitter's eyes. What'd you say? In 2007, Danny Dudek was paralyzed from the knees down from an IED blast in Iraq. Since, he has gone on to win seven gold medals at the Warrior Games. Also, Danny has completed half marathons and sprint triathlons. Danny continues to remain active, serving in the Army's Warrior Transition Command Unit. Buck Sports and USAA honor Lieutenant Colonel Danny Dudek. And yes, we do on this Memorial Day. It's been a very emotional day at Coppin Stadium. Some very moving tributes before the game today. The Royals going all out as they normally do during these great American holidays. Tough night for the Royals on the field, however, down 8 1 as they come up in the bottom of the sixth inning. So it'd be a good time for a grand slam. How about that? And it's our Sonic Slam inning. Our contestant is Beth Lawrence Waite from Kansas City, Missouri. If the Royals hit a home run in this inning, Beth wins $1,800. If the Royals hit a grand slam out of the park, Beth wins twenty-five grand from Sonic and the Royals. Billy, a tough luck 0 for 2. He Flied to just in front of the right field wall in the first inning and then lined to center in the fourth. Bud, you mentioned earlier how bad Dexter Fowler looked at the plate when we were in Houston. Billy Butler, that's about as off as I've seen Billy Butler as a major leaguer in that three game series in Houston. And he has hit three bullets tonight. This will be his first hit. So he could easily be three for three tonight. But with some bad luck, he's one for three as he picks up his ninth double. Nice to hear the crack of that bat off of Billy's. That, that ball making contact there. And he stayed on top of it. He gets it back underside of that. I think he hits a homer. Well, 
Only five hits so far for the Royals against Feldman. And Alex hits it hard through the right side. Altuve got his glove on it. And in a seven-run game, Dale Swain will hold Billy Butler. Alex with two hits, and he's been on base three times. Altuve couldn't slow it down enough to get Billy home. But he almost did. Not only does rookie George Springer have a good arm, but when you have that closing speed on the baseball, you get there a lot quicker, and so does that throw. Sal with runners at first and third, and nobody out. Oh, and one. This crowd at the ballpark tonight, they're still into mm. this game. First Billy, now Alex with a little excitement for these guys here at the ballpark. Like to see that. Popped up. And Kraus to the railing, and it lands in the Royals dugout. Really doesn't appear to be much win, at least win that would affect that pop up. But when that was hit, I thought Kraus was going to make that play in between the line and the dugout, but it just kept fading to the right. So did Salvador. Salvador started walking back to the dugout. He quickly stopped and said, All right, I got another shot. Wants to get that run home. Maybe more if he could find a gap. On the ground is short. And that is the tenth time this year that the league has gotten Salvador Perez to ground into a double play. Butler scores. And it's 8-2. All right, our trivia question tonight, our Sprint Framley question of the day, which Royals Hall of Famer was the Astros' number one pick in 1967. John Mayberry, but I tell you what, I give our viewers credit tonight because if they had all Googled it, it would have been 100%. That's right. But they stayed away from the Internet, and the majority was correct. Thank you. But others just went with their best guess. And I don't know the answer to this question, but I'll throw this one out there. How did John Mayberry become a Royal if he was drafted by the Astros? That's our question for tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, every time we mention bizarre, every time we mention John Mayberry being drafted by the Astros, his son hits a home run. Seriously? Yeah. I every hope that time. happened tonight. How is that possible? Come on. John, there you go. That ball had some length. It was beautiful. Making Daddy proud. Making Big John proud. That was Little John. Who went to Rockhurst, grew up here in Kansas City, went to Stanford. Drafted twice in the first round by Seattle out of high school. Went to Stanford and then the Rangers out of college. The Mayberry family, they don't mess around with anything less. No. Got to be first round. Three balls, two strikes. got to be a record right there right I mean there have been fathers and sons who have both been drafted in the first round I think Tom Grieve and Ben Grieve come to mind 
But has father and son ever been drafted a combined three times in the first round? Huh? Never heard of that. Off of Gonzalez glove. That's a three hit game for Lorenzo Kane. Lorenzo was tempted to go to second base. Oh, well, six runs down. He made the rise to city. Gotta like the hustle though. Love it. Good turn. Brent Strom is the Astros pitching coach. This is his first year as Astros pitching coach. He was Royals pitching coach. When Tony Muser was manager. Escobar goes the other way, almost hit Kane. Boy, that double play is big in this inning for the Astros. That's the fourth hit in the inning for the Royals. But because of the double play, one run so far. And now two on for Siriaco. Siriaco is flied to left and grounded out to short. This is the third straight time that Siriaco has come to the plate with two on and two out. And both times Feldman got him out in the fourth and in the second innings. Right center field and Fowler will make the play. One run, four hits. The Astros turn a big double play. Feldman has given up two runs in six innings, and the Astros lead by six. Astros eight to two in front of a very big crowd. Do you want to sit in some of the best royal seats in the house? Tickets for less has crowns, diamond club, and the best dugout box seats to all Royals games. 
Guys, Tickets for Less.com is your trusted source for all Royals tickets. This year, Tickets for Less is celebrating 10 years of local ownership. Check out Tickets for Less.com, and you too can sit in the best seats at Kauffman Stadium. And a pitching change now for the Royals. Ryan Lewis Coleman coming in. Thank you, Joel. Chevy call to the bullpen. The Royals got two and two thirds innings from Jordano Ventura. He was removed in the third with lateral right elbow soreness. Michael Marriott pitched three and a third out of the bullpen, and now Coleman in the seventh. In for a strike to Alex Presley. Coleman will get the number eight, number nine, and number one hitters in the Astros lineup Presley, Gonzalez, and Altuve. Oh and two. Monty, we have learned that that is not a northeastern goldfinch that is flying around Coffin Stadium. No, I was informed via email by Keepsake, Keepsake Chronicles, the bird's a kingbird, and it summers here because of the great bug hunting at the stadium. Nice. One and two. Moths, right? Aren't they mostly going after moths? Hud, have you ever eaten a moth before? I have. You've eaten a moth? Yeah. It's I thought you just ate the June bug. No, no, no. I've, I've, I've sampled several type of insects. Okay. You're, you're kind of a connoisseur of insects, aren't you? Moths are a little dusty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. There's the king bird looking for the next moth and also keeping an eye on Hud, making sure Hud doesn't make the first move. See, he's got his head on a swivel there. Hud. Field, HUD field. No. Infante will throw out Presley. One down in the seventh inning. There you go. See? Oh, that's a fly, isn't it? Oh, man. Jeez. I mean, don't you want to chew it up a little <laughs> bit first or? You know, chase it down with a drink of water. Yeah, I guess if I were eating one, I would. That's what kind of muscle down a fly dry like that. I mean, whew. That's, that's kind of what a score like tonight's game leads us yeah. to. Marwin Gonzalez has three hits, a run scored, and an RBI. As I was looking at some numbers on Lewis Coleman, who over the last couple of years has been very, very effective against right-handed batters, only hitting 187 against them. This year, right-handed batters hitting 395 against Lewis Coleman. So I talked with Dave Island yesterday a little bit about what it is going on with him and why the, the right-handed batters have had more success this year. And he indicated that injury he had, or that, that bruised finger he had in spring training, really never allowed him to get the work he needed to establish and develop that speed in his arm he needs so as a result his slider doesn't have the same finish off the plate that he was accustomed to getting and as a result we see the numbers here not as effective against the right handed batters makes sense that's your your main slider finger isn't it right and, and, and for him it's just a matter of getting that arm speed getting that strength back in his arm and he's had limited opportunities to do it here uh, at you know at this level and that's a tough injury to explain unless you've pitched at a level like this I mean across the parking lot nobody's going to miss a game because of a bruised fingertip I mean Alex Smith might even play with a bruised fingertip but if you're a pitcher and especially the index or the middle finger right, right. yep and I've noticed over the last couple of games, he's being more consistent with the slider. It's finishing off the plate now instead of finishing on the plate. He's on the plate. Obviously, it's in that hitting zone for quite a while, and then in the, in the batting average against is as a, that result. Siriaco to the grass, and he retires Gonzalez, who's out for the first time. Two down against Coleman in the seventh inning. All right, here's tonight's AT&T fan photo. Now, would that be a four-seamer or two-seamer there, Monty? Two-seamer. Okay. Going right across the seams. Go get a little life with that one. Not as much command, but better life. Mm -hmm. 
We thank Michelle Moss for sending in that picture. Should be easy for Kane. Altuve is out. Stretch time at Coffin Stadium. And before we get to take me out to the ball game on this very important American holiday, let's go down to the field and listen to Marcy Perez, who will perform God Bless America. Combat Logistic Patrols as a combat medical specialist. She has endured numerous IED blasts, which resulted in two concussions, a traumatic brain injury, and a ruptured eardrum. She has been awarded the Purple Heart, Combat Action Badge, Army Commendation Medal, Global War on Terrorism Medal, Iraq Campaign Medal, and the National Defense Service Medal with Oak Leaf Device. Please welcome Marcy as she sings God Bless America. America, land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam god bless america my home sweet home from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with As promised earlier, it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Some great and moving tributes to our armed forces before the game tonight. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, 
Coast Guard throwing out the first pitch. Two Gold Star families were honored, presented with flowers by Alex Gordon and Greg Holland. And the first pitch thrown out by Colonel Jack Brooks, who is a World War II veteran. So aside from the score, it's been a great night at the ballpark. It was amazing watching that on-field ceremonial that they had for all the all the military and Joel and I were doing the pregame show, but we had a chance to have part of it on the show and, and, and glimpses on the field. It was just special. It was very, very moving uh, tributes. I've never seen a Memorial Day ceremony like that on a big league field. It was special. Tony Sipp takes over for Scott Feldman. And a strike to Nori Aoki. Sinking fastball, 88 to 93. He's got a little bit of late life to it. Slider and a change. Throw to righties. Gonzalez has been busy tonight, and he throws out Nori, who is 0 for 4. Royals have seen plenty of Tony Sip. He played several years with the Indians. He was with the Padres in spring training this year. And was released by them on May 1st. On May 2nd, the Astros picked him up. He has now faced 25 batters. And he's retired 23 of the 25 batters he has faced. Stealing. And apparently he was not released until he asked for the release. I think having a good understanding that the Astros were going to sign him, but it's been a nice find for their bullpen. Omar Infante back in the lineup tonight. Coming off the disabled list. He doubled in his first at bat. He's one for three. Oh and two. Remember, we were talking earlier about how Scott Feldman was a 30th round draft pick. Tony Sipp was taken in the 45th round 10 years ago out of Clemson. That's incredible. Drafts coming up in another couple of weeks. And you wonder what 45th pick will become the next big leaguer. Yeah, a lot of diamonds in the rough out there. Oh. It's amazing. The draft is a total inexact science. One and two. Royals have a 50th round draft pick on their 25 man roster, Gerard Dyson. And that was after they stopped picking at 50 rounds. They used to pick even more rounds. I think Mike Piazza was even, he was way down in that uh, 60 something. Yeah, he was below 50. <laughs> That's incredible. And that was as a favor, right? I believe so. Wasn't Tommy of... Lasorda, his godfather, yes. and very close to Piazza's dad. And just as a courtesy to Tommy and his relationship with the Piazza family, they drafted him and arguably the best hitting catcher in history. Most home runs. Sip gets a strikeout. Two down in the seventh inning. Attention all Little Leaguers. Make sure to join us on June 8th. It's Little League Day. The Royals will be playing the Yankees. We hope you'll come enjoy a day at Coffin Stadium. Get a chance to see Derek Jeter play his final series here at Coffin Stadium. Plus, if you purchase our special Little League Day ticket, you have the opportunity to participate in our pregame Little League Day parade. For information, call 816-504-4168. 816-504-4168.
68. Eric Hosmer jolts it to deep right field and Springer makes a great running play and then runs into the chain link. <laughs> no way he catches that. What's left for George Springer to do tonight? He might drive the team bus back to the hotel. Showing off all those tools tonight. Around the league, Oakland all over Detroit. White Sox beat the Indians. Texas no problem with Minnesota. And Toronto continues to put up the offense, winning 10 to 5. Our Mazda game break. How about that Detroit Oakland game? Grand slam for Derek Norris. And now, guys, the Tigers are 1 and 7 in the last eight with a 7.51 team ERA. Only problem, the Royals on the verge in that same stretch of going at two and five and one other note for you in that Boston game Clay Buckholtz walked eight and three innings the last Red Sox pitcher to do that lefty O'Doul in 1923 Wow he's got a nice little restaurant in downtown San Francisco it's pretty famous lefty guy. O'Doul's Bob Davis used to get his mail there BD any chance he got to go to Lefty O'Doul's, he was there. Oh, my. Well, I asked, what was the last thing that George Springer needed to do tonight? He needed to put one in the fountains. Four for four, five runs scored, three RBIs, and he just made a great defensive play in right field for the last out of the bottom of the seventh. Rex, I would say he's legit. Wow. Uh, I'll say, wow. That is Chrysler drive of the game. Short, compact, powerful. Took that ball for a drink. And he's got that big, long swing, but he's still under control when he makes it. That ties a major league high this year. Five runs scored in one game. Man. He is now homered in four consecutive games. And has five home runs over that stretch. And he has eight home runs in his last 16 games. So in the last two and a half weeks he's been homering on average every other day and he is concerned he had his hands on his helmet as everyone was concerned for a moment as that screaming line drive went into the seats over on the first base side and it appears that everybody is all right.
kid is on fire. He has tied an Astros record. Home runs in a month by a rookie. Remember Glenn Davis? Yep, Glenn Davis had eight home runs in one month in his rookie year. And now George Springer, no home runs in his first 19 major league games, and now eight in his last 16. Who man. He is some kind of hot. We got to see that swing again. And Fowler with his good eye. Walks for the third time tonight, and he's been on five times. Let's take a look at George Springer's fourth hit, and it was a homer. Watch that left foot. It turns open. See how he's on the outer half of that foot. That's just tremendous balance, and he's got power. And we did find out they do tape that left ankle before the game. Because that I see that rolling over. I don't know how, how he doesn't have some kind of ankle injury. That's amazing. He's a phenom. He's a phenom and they say he's got a very humble personality as well. So he understands the game. Well, obviously you have to be pretty flexible to be able to swing like that and he has an interesting story. The first sport he participated in was gymnastics. His parents enrolled him in gymnastics when he was 18 months old and participated regularly until he was 10. He was short. He was a shorter kid and he had a growth spurt later in his high school career. But you talked about the balance HUD, the flexibility. All of that learned at a very young age as a gymnast. And Monty, I talked to him in Houston the day after his rookie game, and I wanted to talk to him about facing Greg Holland and, and seeing a big league slider from a closer. What was that like? He stopped and looked at me, composed himself, and said, wow, I've never seen anything like that in the minors. It, it, was, it was so fast, and I had a hard time slowing everything down. Well, but, he, but he was he was well spoken. He stopped. He wasn't. He wouldn't say, "Oh, I got to go to work. Or, I can't talk to you now." He gets it. That's the thing that everybody says about him. He certainly understands the way things should be done at this level. And with most good kids, it points directly to the parents. And his parents were there when he made his big league debut against the Royals back in April. Very humble people answering all the questions. Everyone wanted to hear about George when he was a kid and how did he become such a phenomenal athlete. You could just tell very cordial, humble people. 4 6 3, second double play for the Royals tonight. Castro and Fowler are gone. And now Matt Dominguez comes up with two outs and nobody on. It's interesting looking at the production in the Astros lineup tonight. They have 14 hits spread amongst six hitters. And then you get your five, six, and seven hitters are hitless. Dominguez 0 for 3, Kraus 0 for 4, Grossman 0 for 4. Everybody else has at least one hit and most of them have more than one hit. Dominguez remains hitless as the Astros score again. They've scored in six of eight innings tonight. Springer's had the biggest night. Houston leads 9-2.
Royals baseball is brought to you by Chrysler. Come in for the Chrysler Memorial Day event. Get great deals on an award-winning lineup. And by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. Happy Memorial Day. Tough night for the Royals. Down to their last six outs on offense. And down by seven. This is Josh Fields coming on to replace Tony Sip. Sip pitched a scoreless seventh inning. And then Scott Feldman gave up just two runs in his six innings. 24 punch outs in 17 innings. He's got a good fastball. And a breaking ball to go with it. One down in the eighth. Billy Butler is one for four. 93 to 95. He's got a hammer for a curve and a changeup. Alex was hit by a pitch in the second inning, and he has two singles tonight with a run scored. It may be a double rally cap type of night. Kids got and the, right the idea. rally goggles. He's got the right idea, Ryan. No doubt. Alex is out number two as Dominguez throws him out. He's having a hard time keeping them together. Well, with a big deficit like this, I think of the words of. The great Fred White, our late colleague, who would often say, if you'd like to dream a little bit, and the Royals are running out of time, but this is a low stretch night for the Astros bullpen, which has been bad. Last year, highest ERA. They had almost as many blown saves as they had actual saves. Mm. And this year, they have the same amount of blown saves as they do actual saves. And again, the highest. Bullpen ERA. And one thing different about this bullpen over the last month or so, their bullpen has been much better. Early in the year, it was a tremendous hole in their team. They gave up a lot of runs, but talking with Robert Ford, who does their play by play on radio, formerly here from Kansas City, and he said how much improved this bullpen is over this last month of the season. 2 0 on Sal. That double play in the sixth inning, who knows if he had avoided that, but the Royals were building a rally in that inning. They had two on with nobody out. The double play was big because the Royals followed with two more hits. So they had four hits in the inning, but just the one run because of the double play. Two and one. Good hard slider. Two balls, two strikes. Castro hangs on. No problems for the bullpen tonight as they have faced six and retired six with two strikeouts. Ninth inning, Astros lead 9-2.
Astros. Houston has scored in six of eight innings and they lead nine two. Tonight's copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Kansas City Royals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Kansas City Royals Baseball Corporation. Ryan Lefevre, Rex Hudler, Joel Goldberg, Jeff Montgomery. Our director, Steve Kurtenbach, producer, Joe Lavero. Associate producers, Al Broughton, Sam Abramson, Dave Holtzman. The producer of Royals Live is Brian Shapiro. How about General Robert Brown that joined us today? It's pretty special. Mm -hmm. Came up, took some time to share with the people. Jimmy Paredes will give Omar Infante the rest of the night off as Lewis Coleman throws a strike to Mark Krause. Paredes played third yesterday. Very versatile player. He can play anywhere on the infield and in the outfield. Krause, we were talking about the five, six, and seven hitters. They are all locked out offensively tonight. While the other six have produced 14 hits. Dominguez, Krause, and Grossman are 0 for 12. Two and two against Lewis Coleman. Foul tip and Kraus strikes out. That's Coleman's first. And now Kraus is 0 for 5. Here's Robbie Grossman, 0 for 4 with a couple of strikeouts tonight. Giordano Ventura lasted just two and two thirds innings. He gave up a season high five runs, but was pulled from the game in the third because of soreness. Lateral soreness to his right elbow. He'll be getting an MRI. Michael Marriott went three and a third innings to really help out the bullpen. He gave up three runs and Coleman has allowed one run in an inning and a third. One and one. Jerome Williams warms up in the Astros bullpen. I knew that was Jerome by the color of his glove. Mm -hmm. He honors his mother. Alex makes the play in left field so that five six seven combination in the Astros lineup remains hitless. And two down to Alex Presley. Tomorrow night same time and Jeremy Guthrie will start for the Royals. Colin McHugh will pitch for the Astros. Wednesday is an afternoon game no television on Fox Sports Kansas City and that's Danny Duffy against Jared Cozart. Third hit for Presley he's on with two outs. Jose Altuve. A single a walk two runs scored George Springer four hits a walk five runs scored Dexter Fowler two hits three walks Jason Castro two hits and Gonzalez has his fourth hit. So the Astros have had three hitters tonight who have been on base four or more times Springer five times Fowler five times 
And Gonzalez with a four hit game is on for the fourth time. Wow. I wonder what they fed those guys before the game, the top half of that lineup. They're not missing. Well, let's just let them use up all their runs and hits tonight. Yeah, they need to. And now a strike to Altuve. That's the first career four hit game for Marwin Gonzalez. The Astros have 16 hits. Out at second base. The Astros strand two. Royals down by seven. Kane, Escobar, Siriaco do up. George Springer on Boulevard Royals live as he is only the fourth player ever to score five runs in a game against the Royals. We'll discuss that more on your Dono Ventura and his injury and MRI tomorrow. So I don't know how much more we'll hear, but we definitely will hear from Ned Yost. And we'll talk about this Royals right now game of nine to two being the score. All Astros in this one. Guys, how about this? The last time a starting pitcher and this will be Scott Feldman tonight got a win in a game versus the Royals without a strikeout July 16 2012 Jason Vargas hmm. well he pitched well with a big lead he just threw strikes I don't he think did. he's trying to strike anybody out no and the Royals they have struck out the fewest in Major League Baseball 282 times so that's good and that's not so good that tells me they're swinging at a lot of borderline pitches too for not being struck out that many times Lorenzo Kane has been a bright spot on offense. Three hits, two RBIs. The Royals have eight hits. The Astros have a season high 16 hits, and that's a season high by five. Previous season high was 11 hits. And they have 16. Kane, Escobar, and Siriaco in the ninth inning against Jerome Williams. Very rare to have two players appear in the same game, both born in Hawaii. Scott Feldman, born in Hawaii, but he grew up in California's Bay Area. Jerome Williams, born in Honolulu. HUD mentioned the pink glove, and he wears that to honor his mother. She died at age 46 of cancer. And that was in 2001. VR just into the game, doesn't have a play. That should go as a base hit. And it does. That's a four hit game for Lorenzo Kane. That's the fifth time in his career he's had a 
four hit game to tie his career high. Good for him. And to leg it out without a close play at first base, that's even better. Lorenzo's had a, a, a few chances at first base. One put him on the DL. And he's trying to run through that bag without lunging. Couple of guys with four hits tonight. Kane, George Springer for the Astros. Marwin Gonzalez also had four hits for the Astros. Escobar swings at a pitch in the dirt. No balls and one strike. One and one. Two and one on Escobar. Right center field. And Fowler calls off Springer. Fowler says, hey, man, you're not going to do everything tonight. One down. Yeah, he said, let me in the game. Pedro Siriaco for three. Had a tough night beyond the 0 for 3. He has stranded six runners. This is the first time he has not come to the plate with two on and two out. That was the situation in the second inning, the fourth inning, and the sixth inning. And Williams is in with a strike. Oh, and two. Still oh, and two on Syriaco. And we'll do it again. Jerome Williams, he's been around. And when you when you're a veteran guy and you're called on in the ninth inning with a your team having a big lead like this, there might be some veterans that would maybe go, well, all right, and begrudgingly go in, but not this guy. He's been with the Giants, Cubs, A's. He pitched in Taiwan, he's been with the Angels. He's happy to get the ball whenever they ask him to. Because he's been on the other side. Having to go to Taiwan in your in 2010. He thought his big league career was over. So attitude is extremely important in everything we do, especially in a sport like this when you're a veteran.
Remember we were talking about George Springer last inning and how what a gentleman he was to you when you talked to him on the field and how many times it goes back to the parents. And Williams, his perseverance, I'm sure he learned from his parents the hard way. His sophomore year in high school, the same year, his mom was diagnosed with cancer and his father was disabled in a work-related accident. He mentioned his mom eventually passed away at the age of 46. His father has survived kidney and liver transplants, so he's carried quite a load from a very young age. So going to Taiwan to pitch a year was probably a lot less stressful for him than it would be for somebody else. You got that right. Easy guy to pull for. Except tonight. That's right. I can see Seriaco get a hit. And you're right, he does get a base hit. Grossman cuts it off. Kane stops at second. It's a 10 hit game for the Royals. But they're down by seven. Ten hits, two runs, and you say, why? Well, there was a double play that stopped a rally in the sixth, and nine of the ten hits have been singles. Oh, and one on Ioki. He is 0 for 4. Talked about before the game facing Scott Feldman that he's a ground ball pitcher, and that kind of fits into the Royals style of offense right now, presently. But they just couldn't get the hits through when they had runners on. That one double play kind of stopped them, slowed them up a little. Couldn't never get back into it. Houston just kept coming. Two and one on Nori. Jerome Williams 15 years ago was a first round pick of the San Francisco Giants out of Hawaii. Two and two. HUD talked about the long career which included a stop in Taiwan. He's pitched in the big leagues with the Giants. The Cubs. The Nationals. The Angels. And now the Astros first got to the big leagues 11 years ago. Norrie strikes out so he's had a tough night 0 for 5 and now two down in the ninth inning. Jimmy Paredes will get an at bat. He came on defensively in the top of the ninth inning for Omar Infante. Omar back from the DL tonight, and he was one for four with a first inning double. Paredes played at third yesterday in Anaheim. He was one for three with a single and a run scored. Remember last year Paredes was playing for the Astros and had a big series against the Royals in Houston. I remember that. Royals saw him at second base and they saw him in right field in the same series playing for Bo Porter.
he hit a home run off somebody. Mm -hmm. what was that Shields maybe? Can't remember. He hit a, a big home run for him in that series. Down in the count, 0 and 2. Signed by the Yankees first, and he was a big prospect. He went to the Astros in a deal for Lance Berkman, who's one of the best Astros players of all time. And he was strictly an infielder, and a couple of years ago, the Astros moved him to the outfield. Yeah, he hit that home run off Wade Davis. On the ground to second. Gonzalez stumbles but throws out Paredes and game one goes to the Houston Astros. So that snaps a six game losing streak for them against the Royals. And after beating the Mariners on Saturday and Sunday the Astros have won three games in a row for the second time this year. And they are now four and four on their long. 10 game road trip. Final score 9 2. We'll be right back.